Be on photography show, Andrew Boy, and boy, it feels great when you make video tutorials and your subscribers love them. I'm talking about the advanced spot metering using shadow and highlight video. There were so many subscribers subscribing to us because of that video and a lot of good feedback. We've got three questions asked by subscribers that we want to feature in this episode. Action! First question is from Rakesh Shanmugam. Rakesh, thank you for subscribing to our channel and writing in. Hi, your tutorials are awesome. Thank you. Keep up your good work. Thanks the crew too. One question though, does this technique applies for subject with darker skin tone? Still expose highlight reading on face would be positive 0.7 or would it change due to the differences in skin tone? Very good question. If your subjects have darker skin tone, the rule changes. Let me show you why. When you use your camera's reflective meter, what it does, it, it reads light that is reflected off your subject. And it meters everything to grey. Let's just take colour away for a while. This is how grey looks like in mid-tone. Now, let me add more light to grey. Or add brightness. See what happens. Grey becomes white. Now, what if I gradually remove brightness from white? White will become grey. And if I keep on removing light from grey, you're going to get black. So, if your subjects have darker skin tone, you must not expose them until they become grey. They will look overexposed. Let me show you why. Now, this is a dark and contrasty room, dark rooms. I'm going to use 1600 as my ISO. At f2.8 and the shutter speed of 30. 1 over 30th of a second. You can use any shutter speed to begin with. But I'm using this one so that you can see it easily. Now, where is shadow? Always start by looking at the shadowy area and spot meter there first. Because our eyes locate shadow easier and we are more forgiving with shadow. Now, this is where shadow is. But if you look at the meter, it's not showing shadow. In fact, it's a bright highlight. So how do you get this to shadow? Correct. Increase your shutter speed. Increase my shutter speed until I get shadow. So that's 1 over 250th or 320th of a second. This part registers as a shadow. Now, let's go to highlight. This is where her highlight is on her forehead. So as you can see, this is highlight. Let's take a shot. But wait, you notice that she looks slightly overexposed. Precisely, for subjects with darker skin tone, always meter two-thirds of a stop or one full stop darker than usual. So let's try this again. Let's bring the shutter speed to the same shutter speed. Go to shadow. Make sure that you get shadow. That shadow. Go to highlight. That's highlight. But remember, before you take that shot, make it two-thirds of a stop darker than most of your other subjects. One, two, two-thirds of a stop. Now, take that shot. There you go. So if your subjects have beautiful darker skin tone, all you need to do is to be two-thirds of a stop or one full stop darker than usual. Second question from Ed Plain. Thanks for writing in. Why not simply go to the hottest spot on her face and take the exposure up to just before it blows out, then stop down a bit, and then a bit more, and have three different exposure. Keep the one that appeals the most to you. And not a bad idea, you can do that. But professionally, sometimes we don't have the time to take that many shots. You just want to take one shot and get it right. 
So you can actually meter on highlight first. As you can see, my workflow was to look for shadow first and meter on shadow. The reason is because it's easier to spot where shadow is. Why? I know that bright light comes from there. So my shadow has to be here. Because sometimes the light can be so drastic and contrasty, you just can't find where highlight is. But at no harm. If you find that highlight is where you meter easier, go for it. Thanks for writing in. Third question is from Dr. Pencos. Doc, thanks for writing in. Great tutorial. Thank you. No, Doc, thank you. It would be great if you can expand this tutorial and use some subjects with different skin tone. Done that. And explain the zoning system a little bit more with different skin tone. Doc, good question. We're going to do exactly that. I'm going to teach you how you can use Ansel Adams zoning system to your best advantage for spot metering. Now, Dr. Pankost asked about the integration of zoning system to this technique. Very easy. Now, this is zone 10. Very bright. And this is zone 0. No light. So, if you were to plot a straight line, like what Ansel Adam always say, you can see that this is zone 10 and this is zone 0. And that explains why you can use Ansel Adam's zoning system to easily locate where mitone is. That is why the forehead is more frequently than not associated to your zone 5. So you can go to your forehead and quickly perform a spot meter. Well, sometimes the light can be so strong, this may not work. So that's how you integrate zoning system very efficiently to spot metering these days. Hey, if you love watching our educational tutorial on photography and movie making, simple. You can do two things. Number one, head on to our website, beyondphotography.com.my. There are many e-learning titles there. Subscribe to them. Many of them are even free. Number two, you can do like what all these subscribers did earlier. Write to us, info at beyondphotography.com.my. I'll see you soon. Uh, where was I? Complete, I have to start again. Ah. I do again lah, right? Then I give it a Fuck, I look like Sesame Street eh? <laughs> So user-friendly. Look overexposed. Let me show you why. Good.